Let's see. With a franchise ruining sequel slash reboot on the horizon, <laughs> it's time to celebrate the 30th anniversary <laughs> of the film you loved as a child of the 80s, uh, or the cartoon you loved as a child of the 90s, or Didn't the watch theme it. song you sort of recognize as a child of today. Well, who you gonna call? Sort of recognize? Before Harold Ramis <laughs> Good passed away, there. Bill Murray became a professional party crasher, and Dan Aykroyd went batch crazy. I don't think we will ever have a formal relationship, a formal contact with any alien species out there, especially after 9-11. They were the Ghostbusters, <laughs> old-looking, out-of-touch, okay. out-of-shape nerds. That's true. When we get to 20, tell me, I'm going to throw up. Yep, this is what movie stars look like in 84, kids. <laughs> when there's something strange in your neighborhood, and they look like that there's too. only one group of unlicensed, heavily armed, disgraced college professors you can call the Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, what do you want? There's Spangler, a nerd. I collect spores, molds, and fungus. Ray, a nerd. The ionization <laughs> rate is constant for all ectoplasmic entities. We could really bust some heads. In a spiritual sense, of course. Vankman, a borderline sexual predator. <laughs> and Winston, who was supposed to be played by Eddie Murphy, but got more or less written out of the movie when he passed on the role. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually cropped out on home video too. Oh God, yeah, that's right. When ghosts rise from the dead, I remember that. Haunt New York, the Ghostbusters are the <sighs> only thing between the city and total chaos, causing the media to run glowing profiles of their successful business instead of the fact that ghosts exist and are haunting New York. <laughs> but it's nothing the Ghostbusters. The can't real, have. the they real news. The, car, the gadgets and the vaguely scientific know-how to put evil in its place. Ten people witnessed a free-floating, full torso vaporous apparition. Active Plasmic residue, complete particle reversal, total protonic reversal, focused non terminal repeating phantasm, fourfold cross rip. You have been a participant in the biggest interdimensional cross rip since the Tunguska blast of 1909. Felt great. <laughs> sure Felt great. Slide down the fire pole and into a PG rated movie that kids yeah. loved, even though it's full of cursing. Oh, sh. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen shit that'll turn you white. What an that was PG. This man has no dick. Casual smoking. Back then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and ghost oh my god. That's right. <laughs> Whoa. I forgot you about that part. Better back in the day. <laughs> so grab your I forgot about that part. Heat them up. Heat them up. Make them hard. Make them hard. <laughs> and don't cross the streams. Cross the streams. Don't cross the, the streams. Take down the best knobs the '80s have to offer. You are a pool of scientists, Doctor. Exactly what are you a doctor of? Five thousand dollars. I have no idea to be so much. I won't pay it. And imprison hundreds of innocent creatures okay. who don't do much besides innocent. read, eat, <laughs> drive, and uh, uh, <laughs> I feel so funky. Um, I feel like the floor of a taxi cab. Let's say <laughs> booze. Uh, let's go with that. Starring, yeah. Will you marry me? Funny Dan Aykroyd, Egon, but not forgotten. Sick yeah. horny Weaver. <laughs> Young old Larry King. <laughs> Young old. Dark Helmet. Flubber, okay. David Bowie. Oh. Eddie Murphy. Dad <laughs> Casper. The dad from Family Matters? <laughs> and Ron Jeremy? Whoa, no way. Ghostbusters. <laughs> Ron Jeremy? What? Kids, oh. this was called the library. That's it's funny. It's like a print out of Wikipedia where you have to be quiet. <laughs> the best part of that, honest, really, was how 80s movies... And PG movies back in the day when we were kids, they were the best. They were the best, but you did have a lot of a uh, lot of language, a lot of smoking. Like they 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 nailed it on that one. And you, you can't have movies like that nowadays at that rating. Shoot, there's even things about smoking sometimes in movies where they're like they have an issue with it, and it's like okay, wh whatever. People smoke. That's just the way it is. But 80s movies were some of the best. Even some 90s movies, but 80s they 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 went all out. You just can't have movies like that nowadays. But I love how they went about it in this honest trailer because that was that was great. Brought back a lot of memories. The first movie I really enjoyed, but the second movie I think is better to me. It's just, I don't know. The villain I like more. 
the story is a little bit more fun to watch, but the first one is more nostalgic for me. When I think of Ghostbusters, I go to the first movie, but I like watching the second movie a little bit more. But I don't know, it's been years since I watched either of them, so I might feel a little bit different now that I'm, I'm much older. Uh, <laughs> so who knows? Better than the uh, the, the Paul Feig? Feig? Paul Feig? Is that how you say his name? Paul Feig? That the, the all-female version? The old ones are better than that. And the new ones, which I haven't watched, obviously, the newest one yet. That'll be, what, later this month? Uh, but the Ghostbusters Afterlife, it was fun. It was cool. It wasn't really anything to go crazy about. But the originals are just better. And it's funny. I forgot Eddie Murphy was supposed to be originally in the role. That movie would have felt so much different if he was in the movie, though. So I'm kind of glad he wasn't. Because <laughs> it would just be an Eddie Murphy movie at that point, uh, I feel like. But. I don't know. I think he was on to other stuff. So, well, Beverly Hills Cop was happening around that same time, right? So it's, yeah, he he, he had other things to do. So I'm kind of glad he wasn't in this because it would have felt a little bit different. But let's check out the pitch meeting and let's see uh, how Ryan George goes at this classic. So you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we make a movie where a group of guys go around catching ghosts and we call them the ghost arresters. Well, that's not catchy. Ghost it's not. Arresters. It's not. No, hey, maybe we say that they bust ghosts and we call them the ghost busters. They kind of like ghost arresters. And then we make a theme song <laughs> where one of the lines is like, bust and makes me feel good. That's not appropriate. <laughs> We're doing it. So what happens in this movie? <laughs> this movie starts with a librarian getting scared by a freaky oh, ghost. Geez. And when something like that happens, who are you going to call? I don't know yet. <laughs> That's right. What do they call these scientist guys that teach paranormal studies <laughs> at a university? Know. Okay, so tell me about these guys. Well, yeah. there's Ray and there's Egon, and when we meet Venkman, he's trying to hook up with one of his students. Oh, uh, <laughs> using your position of power to hook up with girls is tight. I did notice that happens a lot in this town. Me too. <laughs> so this guy Venkman, he's like too cool to actually me care too. about this paranormal stuff, right? <laughs> so gonna care about a character that's too cool uh, to care about the thing that the movie's about. I was thinking we cast Bill Murray. Oh, okay, yeah, that'll play. So they head over to the library. <laughs> and they get some ghost evidence and they Gross. see a ghost for the first time. Oh, wow, 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 wow. And they try to grab the ghost, but they don't really know what they're doing and then they no. get scared and run away. Understandable. But then they find out they're getting fired from the university. Oh, well, I guess since they have that evidence of the ghost, they can get funding for their research anywhere in the world. No, they're going to start a ghost catching business. Oh, okay, but they just ran away from the ghost not knowing how to catch it, right? That's right, but they figure it out. Are they going to go back yeah. and catch that library ghost? No, they're just going to start the business. Well, That's I guess right. if they have the money to do it. They don't. They take out a third mortgage on Ray's house. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they get set up in this old fire station. They hire a yeah. secretary. Why are they already spending their limited money on a secretary? What are they going to do, answer the phones themselves? Maybe. <laughs> no, okay. So they don't have any clients. No. But one day, this woman, Dana, walks in because at her apartment, she saw some eggs cooked and a demonic fridge dog said Zool. What? And so the Ghostbusters are all excited for their first client. You know, they need this. Yeah, I mean, I so bet they much must happening. be running out of money. So how does that go? Well, Venkman goes to her place and tells her there is no ghost and then hits on her so much she tells him to leave. Okay, but then they get another client. Oh, yay! <laughs> yeah, there's this gross green slimer ghost in a hotel. Very exciting. So they manage to catch this one, and then they become massive celebrities. Oh, they do? Yeah, they're all over the papers. They go on Larry King. Ray has a dream where a ghost pleasures him. They're huge. They're very successful. <laughs> what that last thing? So now business is booming, and they hire Let's a Let's talk about that real quick. This guy Winston. <laughs> I guess that could help. Now they can split up and go on multiple calls at the same time. Now he's just going to go along with them yeah. on the same jobs, but yep. there are four of them now. And that helps with the workload? Not particularly, but there are four of them now. And what's his deal? He just walks in and he's the only candidate, so they hire him on the spot. <laughs> They're national celebrities and there's not a big lineup of people wanting to work with them? That's what we're going with. They hire a stranger they know nothing about and strap a nuclear reactor to his back. <laughs> oh my god. So then Venkman goes to see Dana and he's like, hey, we have some info on your case. Let's yeah. go to dinner. And she's like, okay. Wasn't she annoyed by his unwanted advances? She yeah, but was. he's charming to her now because some time has passed. How much? Unclear. But then right before their date, she gets possessed by a demon dog. Uh-oh. And so does her annoying neighbor Lewis, a demon dog chases him all the way from his apartment to the park. Why him specifically? Him. Because that works. So Venkman <laughs> shows up for the date and Dana's all possessed him. like, so he gives her 300 cc's of a tranquilizer to knock her out. Why did he bring that with him on a date? <laughs> he shut up and then the NYPD dropped Lewis off with the Ghostbusters because he was wandering you know around he was yelling to do. crazy stuff so they don't know what to do with that. The NYPD <laughs> has never encountered a person screaming crazy stuff in public. So that kind of stuff just doesn't happen in New York City. Well, it's going to get really bad. Uh -oh. 
what do you mean? There's this jerk from the EPA, uh, right? The Environmental <laughs> Protection Agency? Yeah, he says their ghost containment device might be dangerous, so he shuts it down without even knowing anything about it. <laughs> that makes sense. But that freaking breaks it and releases a bunch of ghosts right. into the city. Uh-oh. And in all the chaos, Lewis escapes and goes back to the apartment building, which is actually a ghost antenna. Hey, what are you talking about? Yeah, it turns out the architect <laughs> of that building worshipped this destructive god named Gozer, so he built that whole thing as like a ghost summoning device. Yeah. Oh, freaking sneaky evil architect. So while they're possessed, Dana and Lewis open this portal for Gozer, and yep. then they turn back into demon dogs. Why do those demon dogs need to possess people to then just turn back into demon dogs? <laughs> oh, demonic reasons, presumably. Oh, spooky! So then the Ghostbusters <laughs> confront Gozer, and Gozer's like, hey, choose the form of the destructor. Nice to be able to customize the apocalypse. It is a pretty cool feature. So then choose Bankman explains the to the other Ghostbusters that what she's saying is that whatever they think of is going to destroy them. So if they think of J. Edgar Hoover, J. Edgar Hoover is going to show up. Uh, so J. Edgar <laughs> Hoover shows up? What? No. Well, he just mentioned him <laughs> twice. I thought that might make somebody in the group think about him. Well, you they think. somehow don't, but Ray does think of a marshmallow mascot, so a giant one of those shows up. <laughs> it's going to be tough to stop a giant marshmallow man. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely, Barely an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, they cross the energy streams from their proton packs at the mm -hmm. dimensional portal, and so that does the trick. Oh, wow. They yes. should have done that in the first place. Well, there was a really, really, really high chance that crossing the streams would end all life on Earth. Right. Oh, okay. But it didn't? No, it just causes a <laughs> massive explosion at the top of the building. So they die. No, they just get some marshmallow <laughs> fluff on them. Well, great. So then the day is saved and Winston yells, I love this town. What's he talking about? <laughs> he hasn't said anything in a while. I don't know. I made him say that. That's fair. And so then they're all heroes and Venkman gets the girl. Uh -huh. So the drugs wore off. Yes. So what do you think? Hey, I mean, it sounds yes. like it could be a classic. <laughs> oh, yeah. No one would dare try to replicate uh, this magic. Come on now. I mean, that's... We're past this. I like how both of these videos, they talk about the movie in, in just different ways. Neither was really, well, the honest trailer really wasn't really going at it from a, this, you know, movie has a lot of plot holes examples. It was more of like, hey, hey, these movies were kind of crazy. This is supposed to be a kid's movie. It's PG, but there's a lot of stuff happening in here. And then there's other things that it talks about. But Pitch Meeting, it goes with mostly the plot holes. Both talked about not really Eddie Murphy, but the fact that Ernie Hudson really doesn't have much to do in this movie. And then there's just plot holes of like, oh, but they're like on Time Magazine. They're having interviews with Larry King. There should be people lined up around the corner to try to work with these people. No, just one guy and they hire him on the spot. Okay, cool. So the pitch meeting definitely goes at it from a different angle, which is why they're always great. But uh, this one might be a tie for me, kind of. I mean, like, I, I feel like I did laugh more on the pitch meeting, but I also like the angle that Honest Trailers went with this one. And with it being an older movie, I feel like Honest Trailers sometimes can have a leg up in certain scenarios uh, with the movie and the trailer and things of that nature. But uh, pitch meeting is still hilarious. I just love how he goes about all the different plot holes and things that don't make much sense. And, oh, but they were devil dogs. Why they turn back into devil dogs? Why they have to actually <laughs> possess someone? And then they, it's like, what, what was even the point? Gozer was going to show up no matter what, right? Like, okay. Yeah, different things that didn't make a lot of sense. But he, he did good on this one. This was a good one. Let me know your thoughts, though, in the comments below. Thoughts on Ghostbusters 1984, though, overall. You like it? You like the first one? You like the second one? What do you prefer? Maybe if you're younger, you probably like the new ones more now. You might even like the all-female one. Who knows? But the originals are much better. I think they did good with the legacy-type sequel with Afterlife, but we'll see what happens with this next one. I'm not really looking forward to it, Frozen Empire. The trailer didn't really do much for me, but uh, I'll still try to check it out. Haven't been in the movies much lately, uh, which I still haven't seen Dune 2 yet. So I, <laughs> I have a lot of catching up to do on some things. Watching more TV shows lately, so I need to catch up on some movies, but... uh yeah, let me know your thoughts on this movie and the Pitch Meeting Nas trailer. Which one do you pick? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel, though, if you haven't done so yet. Really appreciate you guys for watching and stopping by. Hopefully you had a good laugh and you could enjoy this one with me as far as this reaction. But as always, I will see you guys in the comments and on the next video. Take care.